a 4.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? Mm. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Rick, I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never going to do the show again, there yeah. was nothing that was going to bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't going to do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him co coming back for so about two months, you know, because he's got our agent now, representing him. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought he was a fool, really. really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham, and it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening. No one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking on the record then, because there's no, it's, there's no loss sure. to London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money. We don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I'm going to have to lie in. I know. But, um, it's all a ruse to get Monday's off. He's got Monday's off now, because he has to do the show, two hours, Three. right? And he's still getting paid, and it's all a con because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel, and he's, it, it's like, oh, we've got to keep Carl happy. Mm. I, I, had, I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 no, you know what I mean, though? And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes along, well, I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mondays off. They, uh, he's probably sitting at home now, his family, he's probably ridiculed by... Yeah. His well, wife. his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. That he's been fooled mates. by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mate to go, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham. I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just, embarrassing. But it's, do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny, and you think you've got one over him. He's going, oh, I'm on this off for two enough. hours. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You think, like, and now you're now embarrassed. We've said that on air. But right. you're only, you're only, you're only conning yourself in the long run, because do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get, what can I get out of the world? What are you gonna give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you gonna prepare Monday? No, what I have you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What have you, what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? For three months, you're turning about, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've, we, I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it. If something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good. It was never good. No, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do. It was a laugh. I mean, much more, I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? You, you sound like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> um, I said, like I, he's I, talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I said, like having, get... having my head squoze, right? <laughs> What? Squares! Squares is still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right? Yeah. I said he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end, he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay then, what has changed in three months? Except they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now. Come on, give us something. Bit of nickel back. What's, <laughs> that, what's happened in three you days? Play a record so what, what, three months? What, in my life or yeah. in here? Nothing's yeah. happened here, nothing's changed here. Right. But, I don't know, what, well, well, uh, do you know, do you know last time we were on? Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where the I one, live. The one that walked around naked? There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked, this right? is when, uh, Carl was watching a woman naked, then she looked at, so, saw him looking, so what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this, he pulled his pants down so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went, I can't tell you now, but don't look out of the window. <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. That woman, she's, uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs> Nickelback, someday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. 
It reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fight to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like, the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. Not uh, good. I'll be controversial. I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Do you know so. what I mean? Are we gonna hear some rock later in the show? We're gonna hear lots of rock. Excellent. It's like, I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, rewind. we've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just high five. Yeah, 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 So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. So, well, certainly, before we, uh, carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird, I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we've got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually, it divides the listeners, is your laugh. It's interesting. Some people love it, they find it infectious, they yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space, like a kitchen Terrifying. or something, it's annoying. Like, Horrific. Carl was annoyed, because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? He was on the toilet. <laughs> I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, no, it's not one o'clock He doesn't yet. like the squeezing. The squeezing head! But, yeah. Um, but it's the just, squeezing one. The funny thing is, right, we were out a few weeks ago with, with a mate of mine, mm. right, and uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right, give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And uh, I was like, don't do that, you know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head squeeze. As if it's like Marmite. <laughs> as, if, as if some people love it. Yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. there's but there's the, there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the yeah. belly laugh. But there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do. Well, I've got to get air out quickly because exactly. I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all like, they try and get out of it. So I have to get out really fast, like a like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that uh, is that how you explain <laughs> the fact that you're you're quite fat? Yeah, it's that's actually laugh. that's just laughing <laughs> waiting to come out. Every yeah, time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing, like <laughs> yeah. Brett Anderson. Oh dear. Well, anyway, it reminded me of the uh, the game that you you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM when it was literally. Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Lovely. was a great game, I think. I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah. I remember yeah. the very first time, yeah. never, I tell you what, it's you not know what, great- You know Ant and Deck do it now. They do, they? do- they actually- It's very similar to Make Ricky Laugh. It's called Make Ant <laughs> Laugh. Interesting. So- So many of our great ideas have been, uh, have been stolen. Yeah. Or stoled. Stoled, yeah. And anyway, I just- I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a picture on. which, um- <laughs> Which I think might, it might be a Ricky Gervais, <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try yeah. and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, because it's like a Dave Gorman project. Can we just stop, let's, I, it's getting, it, it, let's say a word often if it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what are we going to refer to you as? <laughs> Alright, well, make Patty laugh <laughs> is, um, is a new, a new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm okay. concerned because well, I know. I, I, no, I'm not going to. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure, a performing, you're not a performing monkey. No. Okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, <laughs> a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a child, still... neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist. Then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, this is a is quote. This is a quote from him. Right. right. Bear in mind, he's a fourteen-year-old boy. He's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, "Then we had sex. It was every boy's fantasy." All right. <laughs> You're going to show me the picture of her now. Aren't so you? it's a picture of her. Uh, this is not. Bear right. in mind. This is. Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. <laughs> He's collapsed on the floor. I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like a drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> <laughs> she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> but, I tell you she looks like- she <laughs> make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those- I never got on with a fag on as well! <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Just the- That's it with out of makeup though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see- you should see- <laughs> Oh god! Oh. oh! Oh god! How old is she? <laughs> Forty-eight. Oh! Oh god! Oh, Forty-eight. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong, no, nothing wrong with that. I'll but... tell you, if you don't know what, if you didn't see, you weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture. She looks <sighs> just like the um, oldest man in the world. His photo was on uh, in newspapers and on the oh. web for a while. He was about 135 yes, or no, something. Hey, 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 Carl. Hey, Carl. It's you know, Carl, but, Carl's got a theory that Chinese people don't age well. This man was a, he was a, a, a giant man, right? And he was 120 or something. Yeah. Mm. Did you see a picture of him? 
Yeah, he's still alive. No, he's not. No, he's, no, he's not. He's not. He died 120, so... He said 120 or something, but makes you wonder. Go what on. makes you wonder? Well, because they don't age well. <laughs> I think he's using that. <laughs> what he's probably about, what? about so 37. <laughs> We walk down the street, right, and we see a, 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 an elderly Chinese person, yeah. right, and um, and kind of go, oh, I just think he is, yeah. like it, it's not. <laughs> I don't know this this notion that Chinese people don't age yeah. well. I don't know what that... where this is coming oh. from. No, I, I mean I'm not having a go. No, right? I, don't, I, don't, I never want anyone to think I'm, I'm like having a go at them. But yeah. they are really good looking and they're healthy in that. <laughs> till they're about. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen one, right? Can you? I'm can you? Scared. Can you tell me if you've seen a Chinese person no. who's about 30? Well, it's always, it's either 20 or 50. There's no middle ground. <laughs> this, is, this is what I came back for. This is two hours of absolute drivel but from sorry, the brain of Carl Wilkinson. Let me just check something. So uh, the guy, the Chinese gentleman who died recently was 113. Your well. theory is, <laughs> sure, your theory is that he's maybe in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. This is an elaborate conspiracy on his part, because obviously whenever they talk about the oldest people in the world, it is always a Chinese person. Yeah. Invariably. They, they do, yeah. I mean, they seem to win that Again. every year. Go on. So your theory is that in those small battles of villages oh, in China... Ross McWhorter comes to a little yeah, village, they go, and, and then he, goes, on the he way. goes, ah, well, until recently, the oldest person in the world, is like, how old are you? And they're so embarrassed, because they think they look about 120, they go, uh, 120, they go, really? Good. Yeah, can I have his birth certificate now? In fact, I think this Chinese bloke didn't, he, it wasn't verified by the conspiracy files because he didn't have his papers. Didn't have his papers, no. So. Is this the same one or a different fella? I think trying it might it be on. the same guy, I'm not sure. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, an in, there's a huge conspiracy amongst these Chinese villages that every when time. When you get to uh, about 50, say you're 70. Because no one will believe us. Well, if you can confirm or deny that, then uh, then please email in ricky.gervais at xfm. This you, is the racist show on XFM 104.9. Call in if you're anything less than a little mank. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM 104.9, with me, Ricky Gervais. You, Stephen Merchant, GQ presenters of the year. Radio personalities of the year. It's official. We're uh, the best radio personalities of the year. I, I, um, we got that award sent to us, didn't we? We yeah. did a little thing. But it was only our two names on it. It so had your name, Rick, definitely. I remember that. It had my and name. And your name. Didn't see Carl Fulkin's name anyway. No. Anywhere. And it's yet he's the one with the day off and the money and the, the, the con in the MD and making him cry at home. Let me just mate. remind, Go can on. I just check that Go again? He, so he's made a fool out of the MD he's made a fool and out all of the MD, major, all basically this, all the capital shareholders. All this shit about, oh, I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not. I want, okay, I want a day off then, which is the same day off as his girlfriend gets off. So he's just like walking around, I don't know, Hyde Park, yeah. just feeding ducks when yeah. he should be working out what can he can do instead of rockbusters, which is basically blockbusters <laughs> with a word changed. <laughs> <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> right, listen. If that's, if that's annoyed you, I'll what? tell you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there and I'd be, <laughs> no, and I'd be giving him the finger. I'd go, you can intimidate my family. I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike. I'm behind that, fair enough. But not when it's <laughs> these wildcats. They're just out there, they're just taking days off, willy-nilly, they're not, they're, they're wow. sealing out the post boxes, it's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid, because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary <laughs> Review haven't turned up, so he's, he's in a terrible way. And, uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me, there's nothing, there's no, yeah. there's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night, and I, it got me panicked, because I was thinking about if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups. And do you know what? The, like a cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. Oh. Every, I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes. I had so the, much the mash farmers. last night. I had so much sausage mash, right, I, I, the second helping, that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds. Spuds and bread. I could not do without but spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds, I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah. And it's like, you, they're amazing, you can boil them, you can broil them. Yeah. I don't know what broiling is, but I, I, it's, I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as, I mean, obviously the chipped potato is, is the working class, is oh, the chip. it was always on, the chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the, uh, you know, the, the death trap fire, um, what's it, polystyrene ceiling <laughs> <Yeah>. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. Come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. 
And, uh, it, we always had chips. Because or, I, all I remember hearing, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Carl yeah, potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's, like, I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me because what it's- What did you have to do? Did you have to, what, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Well, do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you, so if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what you're playing at. Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like- I haven't had errands for since no, the 70s. Nice really. just, I went to you phase. Right, the little local supermarket, yeah. and I got, uh, What's it called? Euth euthanasia? <laughs> what? I did- You phase. You phase. You phase. You phase. You phase. phase. You you phase. Right. Yeah. H-U-G-H. You phase. Oh, you oh, phase his name. name. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I just, phase, had to right, get, yeah. I just had to get, like, a bag of potatoes. Of course you did, yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So, yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when, like, even the teachers were like, just, just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, start that. joyriding that. or something. Live! I'm, I remember wh uh, when Jane was little, she was at school, I think it was about 10 or something like that, do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get a bit of it, she knew. Unless it was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know Dibblethwaite had one. I don't she know, did maybe. I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just. I just. I just it feels like it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I got nothing else. I got to have that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or uh, or mash, isn't it really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure. Sure. Is, is it, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one strike that would, would go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, take your picture, or they, they, they do a caricature of you. The strike, yeah. imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'll so tell right. you, I'll tell you also, the strikes that have no effect. Right. Those, um, people in, um, in nightclub toilets, who just, you know, are kind of there, they got the, uh, the Lynx deodorant oh, spray. Oh, quite controversial at the moment, with the, the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the show of Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? Sure, I got so, some thoughts on that, actually. Like what? Well, well, maybe we play a record, I'll share my thoughts on. Well, thought, on um, Tweedster. coming up, um, some Steve Merchant thoughts on the show, uh, Tweedy case. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> What's up in 104.9? Some REM, right? I think. Uh, What's yeah, the frequency, yeah, Kenneth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, the user Pilkington. <laughs> just takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes, takes. Destroy the man. <laughs> <laughs> Go with you, Steve. <laughs> you should talk like that more. It's cool and sexy. Thank you. Um, I make it clear now, I do not condone in any way, shape or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean... Toilet attendants. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not, um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant. Yeah. So, um, go on. But, because I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or, uh, pubs or big trendy pubs, you go yeah. in there and there's the toilet attendant in there. He's got his little display of, um, you know, aftershaves, sprays, yeah. some sweets maybe, blue straws, whatever it might be. Yeah, maybe, maybe a lollipop. Maybe a lollipop. And, all right, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy. Do they, do, the when toilet. the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy <laughs> yeah. who's just like. Is it like basking? Yeah, he's snuffing. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour. <laughs> he's got a little bag, a carrier bag. Yeah. He's snuck in the, in the toilet. But the yeah. thing is, it's the fact that, uh, toilet attendants, fair enough. I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me, and then shoots off. But it's when I have to see them there. I, I feel know. guilty because I'm like, I've got a, it's like, I oh, maybe we wash my hands, I'll forget he's there. He'll hand me a paper towel, 
Suddenly I got a tip in, like but a quid or something. Me just there, there, I wash my hands at all. I don't usually wash my hands. I, I, wash I, my I, hands. I, I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out. Oh. I do it by stand and change my trousers <laughs> when I get home. Exactly. So it annoys me to go through this charade of getting it out, slashing <laughs> out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, just if he did there's... any of those elements, what, I'd tip it for him a you? quid, yeah. Pop it out, pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. And I, I know. Just, it's just guilt, and I, sometimes I'll hold it in. Because I'm nervous, I don't want to go back in there. What annoys me is a, like, a posh of water, I mean, it's a pound of piss. It is a pound of piss. Do you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I Or in a like... top hotel or something. Yeah. It's absurd. And I, t I tell you what's worse than that, I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids, but it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanised, you know? If he was only dehumanised, Rick. <laughs> yeah. If, he, if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under the, under the, the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or if I he just could hide underneath the sink. hand out, like thing, from the Adam's right, just, he just put, puts out, you know. just pop a hand out, doesn't say anything, just hands through the paper so towel. So you don't even see, like, you know, hand out, and then I go, I put a pound in, I take the thing, put a pound in, nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no aggro. <laughs> exactly, it's the fact I gotta see them and I feel guilty because, you know, <laughs> I'm on the radio, I've got a cushy life. I know. Here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad, it ruins me evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them, can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a, <laughs> can they get a job? Illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> <laughs> Please! <laughs> Born again. Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, Go actually on. Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, yeah. it's his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends, but also because of the the postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the post strike won't be on. Around that time. <laughs> Alright, Carl. So, but anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? I Carl. Just, still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. It'll make, happy it'll birthday, make Tracy. Happy. And hello to Aidan, who's uh, phoned in to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, so we're, we're, we've gone international. Sure. Now there's uh, also a questionnaire, a questionnaire has been sent in by uh, Ruth Chamberlain at Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College? <laughs> Seems a weird. Cordway? It used to, yeah, it's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette, <laughs> I, I think it's, to. yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry, and anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire, and we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire, but we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, Carl, about... look, he's yawning, he's looking round, he's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off, and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably, you've probably ruined a man's career, he's ridiculed now. For doing this, that you so weak, where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do, then you get two days off. All right. All right. Right, Carl. It's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh yeah. There's one person. <laughs> <laughs> well, that should answer it right there. <clears throat> First question, Carl. On a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it at this moment or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like. Oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it. No, but it doesn't mean I'm not. I'm not happy in that. Like, I, I'm all right at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a. It's probably on a, about an eight. I was. A, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over her haircut. Yeah. Right. She went for a haircut and came back with something that I didn't like. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? You so so when your girlfriend walked through the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right? Do you well, say you could tell by the look on my face? I, I, but, I said, but don't you say no? I'm I'm happy with it. I just just can't tell. I'm loving it because I'm, then she might have it done again. Oh, you Carl, like I just cannot else. get over you. I really can't. I no, but cannot... you haven't seen it. Right? Just... So so then I was fed up. But what, then I thought- Sorry, what authority have you got uh, to talk about haircuts? Yeah, you had that. you had the, uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack, it was two pounds a cut, told you you had the hair of a Chinaman, well, <laughs> you wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now, you got nowhere. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open, so don't- Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on? <laughs> I don't know. Well, she knows now, doesn't she? <laughs> what did you say? What, what words did you did do you say? about it, though? She said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> Interestingly, oh, no. that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God. Which one oh. is Slade? 
Well, that one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. Yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy... She has her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dump her. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm... So, so prior to that you're on a nine, then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what uh, you on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while well, Star Sailor was on, bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> so, yeah, about a five or six. So, generally speaking, what would you say you are about on? Four. You're on a four. <laughs> four <or nine. laughs> All right. Um, what would you give someone who wasn't very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Carl? Depends why they're not happy. They're not, they're low, okay, so what would you give them? I mean, if you, if, yeah, depends, innit? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure. Or some mittens. Yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, and, oh. dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't know. know. You gotta answer the question. Alright, so hang on, let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? you do you now to make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so, w w when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay, oh. and, uh, oh. all right, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, Carl. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, innit? Learning something. Right. <laughs> That's a bit weird. <laughs> no, I love the qualifier. That's no, I think a bit it was weird. two. I do. I think it was two different seven sentences. I think it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for it. Don't put words into it. Uh, uh, you can have anything you want. It'll cheer you up, and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's got to be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What what would you have? It can be it can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, someone else wish for that. Sure. It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why uh, should you do it? And then that someone else gets a nice new watch and there's world peace. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round, it's nice and peace, but you know what time it is. He's swanning round, he's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am, really. I don't, I don't really want to. Are you much. really? But you're on a four. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, on a happy yeah, scale yeah, of four. Yeah, you're on a four. Surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's, what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's, what's a ten? Contentment, absolute contentment, joy Bliss. in your heart, yeah. inwardly and outwardly. Not walking around with a little round man head with your mouth open going, what's the point of that? I've done it once. <laughs> Is that why you've still got all the condoms? You've done it once. <laughs> what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get over here. some air gel. Come on. Ten. Just one thing that would make you happy, that would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well? <laughs> I'll have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away, shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Cos I, cos I am happy, I know you, I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know what, do you know what, it's it, 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 it wouldn't want to be too rich. He said, cos if I was too rich, then Suzanne would say, let's go around the world. He said he wants to be rich enough, so they're a, a, happy in that, they got their bathroom and everything, but they can't, they still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that, think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round Charlie's Chocolate Factory <laughs> and he'd said, actually Carl, I want you to take over the factory, it was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I'm and happy to go back uh, and live. No, no, he'd have said, he said, I'll, have, I'll work it, but I'm not working Monday. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. Imagine giving a Chocolate Factory to a kid. I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least, he yeah. enjoyed it more. That's the price I buy for loving you do I that I do. Beautiful. Billy Bragg from his, uh, Essential Billy Bragg compilation. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking Billy Bragg, or oh, I can't be bothered, politics, and I have to say, Buy this CD, 
skip past every song that is, for instance, um, there is power in a union. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be duped by fascism. Yeah, it's your, uh, it's your, uh, right and duty to vote. Yeah. Right wing, wrong wing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Ignore all that. But just listen, that. just listen to the his love, love songs. His love songs are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fan fantastic. New England. Tonight I celebrate my love for you with a pint of beer and a new tattoo. Uh, it's yeah. great. Brilliant. Yeah, look, lose the ones about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Striking. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because we know what we think of that. So, um, yeah, I heartily recommend that. Um, and, uh, what Carl, we're on happiness. Carl. Yeah. I'll we'll try and explain to Carl that the aim to, you know, is really to get on a ten. Yeah. Well, I like the he's fact that he four. started on I mean, a nine. But I love the fact he's happy with four. Yeah. Uh, I love that. No, but what, what I mean is, right, I'm not looking for, like, happiness. Right. I'm You're all right You're not looking for happiness? What? <laughs> What's that for? What I mean is, right, I'm happy when I'm not fed up. So what I mean is, I'm happy- Is this the- is this your, in your new book? <laughs> Psychology of the Mind? <laughs> what- what is that? I'm happy when I'm not fed up. <laughs> That's like an eight-year-old trying to try and explain happiness. Johnny, what is it when I'm happy when I'm not fed up, miss? Well done. Good boy. That's it. You're happy when you're not fed up. Talk like an adult. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you, though. I don't- What? I- I'm happy most of the time. It's just that when things niggle me, I find that- m I realise when I'm annoyed more than when I'm happy. But Carl, you, every time we talk to you, you are whinging about something. You've got yeah. something that annoys you. But he's you. one of those people that if he whinges loud enough, he gets away with it. Like he's in it. I think he goes, oh, I'm really busy. I'm like, I come in and he's doing nothing. He's chatting because mm. he's having big long chats with everyone about how someone's wound him up. Yeah. And they all come in and they go, oh, Carl's fed up. Because he's got this show. You know what I mean? He's wormed his no, way. No, hang on a minute. You go came on. in. You came in moaning about the post and that today. Yeah. But everyone's annoyed and frustrated by that. There's small businesses going out I'm of not, business. I'm not, you haven't heard me no, you're not right. because who's sending you letters? No one. Mm, You've got no friends. No. You've said that yourself. Yeah. You've openly declared you don't want friends. That's too much hassle. Yeah. 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 That, that, um, yeah. that is that is my job. Friends is the, it, that is the point of life to me. It's I can't wait to see them. I squeeze their head. I welcome them in. Uh, they annoy, <laughs> they annoy me. Are, annoying. I love it. Friends are annoying. He's even scared of like. Uh, doing some uh, uh, with a friend or, uh, uh, getting a gift because he goes after buying one back now. Yeah. It's sort of like life's a bit of a chore for Carl, isn't it? Well, anyway, all right, let's leave that aside. Obviously, you're never going to be entirely happy, although apparently you are already on the brink of happiness. All you no, have to say is your hair look nice. I that's all you have to say. Yeah, it looks good, yeah. And that's it. End of story. What's the point in that? What is the point in she that? Because she doesn't re- she doesn't really care what you think, but she doesn't want to hear that she looks like Dave Hill from Slade. She's not having her hair cut just to please you, Carl. Despite what you might think. <laughs> yeah. He's taken aback by that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, happiness then, yeah. All right, so, listen, so I, I was happy the other week, right, when I was going up to Manchester on the train, mm. nice quiet carriage, I'm sat there reading about sharks and that, right? <laughs> nice, yeah. nice and quiet. And I got annoyed, I texted you, didn't I? Yeah. When, uh, two fellas got on. Um, can we talk about it? Well, yeah, you, 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 I mean, you, you, you've started it. Two gay men got on. Go on. Two gay fellas got on. Yeah. And it wasn't the fact they were gay that bothered me. It no. was like, you know, each to their own. Let sure. them get, you know what I mean? Let yeah. them do what they do. Yeah. And, um, Behind closed doors. But they started talking really loud. Huh? Right? And they were going on about, uh... Well, that's annoying what? anyway. That's annoying whether you're straight or gay. Yeah, yeah, mate. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Talking too but loud. Do you know what theory I have about <laughs> they go out late? <laughs> yeah. Gay people always go out late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we're- yeah, I mean, what- what- what time do you go out in the evening? Uh, 7.30. If you go out about 7.30, yeah. if you- yeah. you know, if I'm out of work, I might- I might go out about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Mm. I guarantee I'll sort of be in bed by about half 12. Sure. At that time, they're still sort of ironing the jeans. <laughs> right? And- and the funny thing was- I- I've <laughs> always, in their jeans! I've always said this, right? <laughs> Dalton and, and you, sort, you sort of said that's rubbish. I'm sat on the train reading about sharks. These two are talking. And they're going, oh, we can't wait to get there. And his phone goes, and he goes, uh, hello. And, uh, on the end, he goes, anyway, I'll, I'll see you at one then. Right? Right. So I thought, well, maybe that's tomorrow. Yeah. Could be one in the afternoon. That's when most people would meet. Yeah. And then he carried that's on talking. When most people would meet! He carried on talking, and he goes, yeah. So anyway, like I say, see you tonight. One o'clock is meeting someone. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't know You're why he's out that late. Do you remember when his favourite record of all time is The Killing of Georgie? Sure. He said, would he have been killed if he'd have been <laughs> back at a decent time? <laughs> uh, there's no mention point. of the time sure. in this song. And then the funny, the funny bit was actually, that did make me laugh, right? Uh, when he'd finished talking on the phone, he said to his partner, right, 
uh, oh, there you go, let's have a little chat. And the fella said, who was that? And he said, oh, it's, it's Dave. He said, which one's Dave? He said, you know, the one with the shaved head. I thought, in the gay community, yeah. that isn't a good description. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So I've got, well, got little shaved heads. Before we move on, was the Sharks article interesting? Did you learn anything? It was pretty good. Was it? Go yeah, on, I'll teach it? you something about that later. Oh, okay. Uh, is, this, is this educating Ricky? Uh, it wasn't, but I can, I can te teach you a bit. Yeah? Alright. That's good. Play some ads on that. Play some ads on a tune, and then have we got maybe a competition? Yeah. All what right. have we got? We're all looking forward to that. Alright. <laughs> Fortune faded. Fortune faded. Red hot chili peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours a day, then a Monday off. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down into the depths for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be- Okay, um, okay, I'm just gonna say it, um, I, I think Shed 7 have split up. Sorry, I didn't- Shed 7 have split up. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I- sorry, I think I got something in my eye, <laughs> um, uh, it's just a bit dusty now, I think, so, okay, if it's true, it's true, if not. We've got their, at least we've got their music. Their music, the music, the music lives on. So we're going to dedicate this show, Head 7, and all the bands they influence. influence. So we're just going to play. Just every, every, every artist that, that formed a band after they'd heard Shed 7. Just play them from now on and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed 7 hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website, it said about, is it true, Shed 7 has split up? And the next, well, you know, one of those dorky message boards, someone came out and said, you are joking. <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that uh, uh, it's just a rumour. It, it is just a rumour, yeah. Then oh, get in touch. Just, just to call in if it's true. Um, Maybe well, no, call in, call in yourself. If, Monday. Well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, yeah. uh, call in and say, what, what was the split all about? <laughs> Tell you what I, uh, read about. Sharks, monkeys, or jellyfish? Uh, it's, it's ten past, isn't it? We haven't, uh, we haven't done a, a little bit of knob news. <laughs> no, right. we haven't done knob news, no. But, um, It's been three months. It's been, it's been three months coming. There's this, there's this thing, uh, I don't know the full story, I don't know how it happened, right, but little, little Russian, uh, Little Russian fella. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, sort of having, uh, sort of emptying his bladder, right? And yeah. somehow electrocuted himself. Right? right. And, uh, sort of did a bit of damage. How was he, what, is he smashed I, I don't know, some I don't live know. wires or something? something? like that. So did anyway. it damage to himself or to an electric fire or something? No, to himself. To himself. Yeah. And, um, so the doctor- Didn't, didn't slip and t t curling tongs went up his ass when he was pissed because <laughs> that, that's happened a lot in yeah, we've hospitals. All been there. We've all been we've all, we've all, we've all should have the old curling tongs up the ass <laughs> when having a piss. Right. So, um, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> no, come on, no, we're interested, we're interested. <laughs> what, no, come on, we're interested. Don't you you can't be bothered, you get Mondays off, do some work. Right, so anyway, so the doctor says, oh, not looking good, we'll have to take that off. Mm. What? He's like, the, oh. uh, uh, yeah. Really? <laughs> But the funny thing is, right? Nothing funny about that. They've done, uh. You're doing me heading. You're doing Just me tell the today. story! Just doing me heading. Oh, you can to. chill out I've on Monday. Got, I've only got 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you every Saturday. I'm gonna get the money's worth out of this, because you get Mondays off. And I can't, uh, I can't bear the fact someone getting away with something like that, because it's terrible. So you're gonna stick this out, or you're gonna have to work Mondays. So take it on the chin, mm. right? Okay. Just finish the story. Yes. I command you. Just do it. Anyway, so they've, they said, he said, you know, you, will you be able to sort me a uh, little knob out? A prosthetic right? knob, yeah. yeah. But, they put him out, yeah. for the operation. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah. Right, and he's thinking, oh, thank God that's over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> They've only grown it on his arm. What are you talking about? <laughs> you twat. Shut the f- do you an idiot. What do you mean they've grown it on his arm? Apparently, like, that's, that's the way they do it. Oh, then, yeah, but to, to then put it on, that, that, that wasn't a mistake, it wasn't doctor going, did it go there? <laughs> Some bloke didn't, I didn't do a degree. Are you a real doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but why, why put it there? Cause it's got a graph, cause it's got a grow, it's got a graph there, it's where they can control it. To skin, the, to skin tissue. But on your arm. Well, 
But they're going to remove it or... from the arm. It's so... do you mean on the back? On your back. Somewhere. Well, we can't wear a t-shirt. Yeah, but you can. He's quick... in hospital. He, he, but th this way, he can still have a little tug, no, can't no, he? But they'll leave it there for quite a bit. It's not. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be like, oh, it's just there for a few days. Yeah. It's there for a bit. That's not good, is it? So he's got a cock on his arm. Yeah. What's up with that? What do you mean? What's up with that? Well, I mean, it, it, you could say it's a, it's a, it's a thumb or something, couldn't he? <laughs> yeah. But they, they remove be, it. Be good for hitching. It it, if, if you had, if you had a knob instead of a thumb and you went hitchhiking, just tickle it. They can see it like a mile down the road, couldn't they? <laughs> Posting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd lost my knob, I'd go, oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tits on me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think, oh, I'll have a, just forget it. <laughs> but, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? You know. On the forehead. Know. <laughs> uh, listen, let's, are we doing a competition? Let's play a tune. Let's, let's, let's come just, on, let's just... Carl, you can't be bothered. Right, oh, okay, we're rainbow, gonna scrap rainbow, this yeah. and you're gonna work Mondays again. <laughs> Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow on XFM 104.9. Well, it's what, uh, the, uh, Londoners have been waiting for. It's Rockbusters, isn't it, Carl? Well, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not Rockbusters, it's, it's something we've done. It's a bit like Rockbusters, but it's been tweaked. <laughs> right? Brilliant. So remember that, it's done with sound effects and that. Oh, oh God. God. Really? What do you mean? All right, come on. Right, remember this one, we, we tried it before. Hold on, wait a minute, there'll be headphones on, right? Hold on, wait a minute, wait And this is one you've done in the past, this is not, not the competition. This is not the competition, but I said, like, what, what song is this? <laughs> yeah. Smack my bitch up, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Smack my bitch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's kind of that, but but rather than just doing songs, it's that film or song sounds good. You know when you do these things, you can't do them in the week. You've got to do them either Saturdays or Mondays. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, well, I'm gonna check well, on that because well, it really annoying me. Because it, it's, it's been done, so it doesn't really. You don't have to worry about it when it's no, when it gets done, that do you? Because it's done. So. Well, yeah, but I don't. You're taking time out of things you should do. Be doing at work. You're yeah. already weaseling well. XFM's going down the tube, mm. and you're taking the piss left, right, and centre. Mm. Right. So, so is is this week's little grab that film or song sounds good? So, what is it? Come here. <laughs> I'm well happy now I've had that. <laughs> what? what? Huh? Well, it's a film or a song title, is it? No, it's, it's a film or a song. What do you Forget mean? that. It's a film. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? That must have taken you three minutes. I hope you didn't do it on a Tuesday, though, because that's cutting into precious time. <laughs> like, have you sorry. seen how long a trial takes him? About 30 minutes. And he sorry, do uh, one let a week. Just, let's just concentrate for a second. Okay. Right, it's the film. This is, is it? a film title. The title of a film. Yeah. Play it again. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> right? Uh, oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Three, Three months they've waited for that. Three months for that. <laughs> Shite. Do you want to say what the prices are? Oh, I can do. I'll tell you, there's good news and there's bad. I don't know, I think maybe this is what people think of Carl's quizzes. This is the respect they show us. Because you know that, um, the various companies, they'll send you product which you can include in competitions. It's a yeah. promotional tool. Yeah. They've sent us, um, I'm Alan Partridge, Series 2. Yeah. And Forty Towers, the complete series. Brilliant. On VHS. I mean, who's got a video player anymore, Carl? It's for losers and the working classes. Yeah. The up north. They still sell them up north, I think. In, mar in market stores. <laughs> it's been redeemed. It's, I mean, I, I wonder how, how we got hold of that. Yeah. Yeah, the Office series two on DVD. That was that was a nightmare getting hold of that one. The best um, album in the world ever. It's got stuff on there. Super Furry Animals is on there. Supergrass, Gold Frap, and uh, also the best of the Boomtown Rats, which is not bad, and um, a couple of Teachers DVDs. So some good stuff there amongst the uh, the VHSs. And you can win all of those treats by identifying this film. Oh, God. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> <laughs> Email only, we don't want to actually speak to you. <laughs> Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm sorry if that's brought you down, it's made um, us feel Can nice. I just say something? What's the phone number, Carl? 
0800 800 1234. Call up for no reason because I want Carl to answer the phone. He hates doing it. So call up and talk to Carl. Ask him anything you want. Just talk to him. Okay? Right, answer the phone. They're going mad. <laughs> Big Sir on XFM 104.9. He's so annoyed that he had to answer all those calls. <laughs> Why did you like it? I just. We're wasting time, aren't we? <laughs> that's your listenership! No, no, no. They want to speak to you. No, that's nice and everything that people call up. Yeah. But we should be concentrating on what we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm just... but I do this show to annoy you. I don't do it for the money or the kudos or the awards. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I do it so you have to be here and do what I say for two hours because you're getting away with murder here in the week. I don't like seeing that. I don't like injustice in the world. I try and fight it wherever I can. <laughs> so I do it to well, annoy. It's good of you, Rick. Thanks yeah. for doing that, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting though that you, you it's pa you're passionate about fighting injustice, but you focus <laughs> specifically on Carl at XFM. <laughs> One yeah. of the world's lesser crimes. <laughs> yeah, being a little yeah. bald mank twat. Exactly. I know, yeah, but nonetheless, it is a crime. Look, at him, look, he's got his head down like one of those, you know one of those chimps that have like lost their mate in London Zoo? <laughs> he just sits there like, you know, a, a broken animal. Carl, what are you thinking? Where are you on the happiness scale now of one to ten? Carl? On about a three. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what are you gonna do? Well, we were talking earlier about stuff that happens exactly. while we've been away. Um, we, we, um, shed, shed, we don't talk about I haven't <laughs> been this upset <laughs> since, uh, yeah. Skunk and Nancy broke um, up. Yeah, I know. Cheryl Tweedy. Um, we've done that, we've done the tweets there. Um, well, of course, the war. Is that all I've done and dusted I now? I think it's pretty much over. I think we've, um, we've sorted that out. Okay, good. What annoys me is people going about have a, going at Tony Blair and Bush right for like bomb, you know, bombing stuff and all that. But my point is this, right? Those bombs have all been bought and paid for. Yeah. You, the, the taxpayer, of, they're, uh, yeah, yours. And I'm paid not for. a scientist, but I think bombs go off. <laughs> I think so. And if you don't, Use them, you lose them. <laughs> so let's use them. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like it's, tinned food. It lasts like, for like, a yeah, while, but eventually it's going to go off. Like, it's like anything. Oh, we better eat that. We're, 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 no, don't do with the fresh stuff. Don't build the fresh ones. Let's use the old ones. Exactly. So because they're know, just stockpiling there, and they cost we, us millions. I know. We want to see if they work as well. What? Do, no, we, we never tried that one. Use them. <laughs> use them on just home. you know. Oh, exactly. Carl, who would you bomb if you could? Uh, I wouldn't. No? What do you mean? Well, what, imagine you could bomb a country. You, you're not actually going to bomb them, but you're just going to frighten them. Just going to put the frighteners on frighten them. Frighten them, yeah. You're just going to go, I'm going to bomb you, and then I'll And they'll go running, uh, yeah. and under tin shelters and that. Yeah. Ricky's house? No, come on. What country? No, what country? I, I wouldn't, I, honestly, no one sort of makes me fed up or anything. No one makes you fed up? I'm not, not enough that I want to bomb a place. Well, you're not actually going to bomb them. I wouldn't get the involved. Frighteners I just say, let did someone else do it. Sure. <laughs> What about you, Rick? <laughs> oh, I got a list here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you know who I'd, uh, who I'd threaten? Go on. The Swiss. Oh, they've had it easy. They've always they? had it easy. They've always they've, chickened they, it. It's the equivalent of having Mondays off. Exactly. Like, oh, we don't want to fight. Exactly. You, can, you can both walk through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're a carpet. Exactly. Well, yeah. we're busy sorting out fascism. Yeah. You know, or Osama bin Laden. They're, they're just in, chilling they're out. They're holding ours and Hitler's coat. <laughs> exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> Little weed. Yeah. We're both turned on them. Yeah. And I'll tell you else. This will just frighten them up. Just shake off a bit. Um. Iceland. They have had it easy. Because they have stayed out of everything. They have not been involved in anything, as far as I can tell. But you don't have to bomb them, do you? Eskimos, they've, they've never been involved in anything. I know, but don't bomb them, just pour hot water on their <laughs> Exactly. Just send a plane over with warm yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> with a big flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just to shake things up a bit, just to keep them on yeah. their toes, that's all it is. Why would you live there? If you could choose, I'd If no you're an Eskimo and you're born, and you're a little baby, you grow up and you go, what? I'm, I'm, sorry? I'm eating ice and fish for yeah. the rest of my life. Well, fair You're enough. You're having a laugh. Fair enough, like years and years ago. But now, presumably, they they're off, they're aware of the proper house I know. and the, the fact you can live in, say, Somerset or the south of France. I know, but it's like, haven't they learned? It's sort of like, well, that they haven't even got. They're not even on as good a thing as the North American Indians. Now they're sort of pissed up. They got smoking fags. They live in lovely little cages. Up. They, they're all brought to their little village. They're having a whale of a time. They don't have to go hunting anymore. Yeah. And like killing buffalo. And exactly. the same with the es Eskimos. Let's get them some beer and fags down there. Knock the igloos down. Build them some lovely little. Well, 
semis or like or um, just a little kind of trailer or a caravanette or something like that. It's <laughs> yeah. gotta be better. It's gotta be preferable. <laughs> I know. Some of them have got TVs built in, Rick. I know. What and showers. Want? Yeah, they've got cable and stuff, have they? Yeah. Or is there one sort of Icelandic well, channel? Get satellite or whatever, wouldn't Magnus you? Magnuson. Yeah, exactly. Probably doing there's loads of mastermind reruns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Pingu. <laughs> Just on a loop. Yeah. That's porn over there. Yeah, though. exactly. Oh, brilliant. No, well, that's, oh. Like, that's like a hardcore documentary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Racist <laughs> FM 104.9. Yeah. So, uh, who would you like to see bombed? Or not bombed? <laughs> <laughs> not bombed, but just put the fighters on them. Yeah, it would be Email Ricky Dr. Vase, the XFL. Anyone. Yeah, yeah. Any nation or anything. Carl, thoughts? Hi, Song. You, you're not working for your money. You're not having Monday off. We've got to do something Monday. Let's plan something Monday. Just to get him in here. You've got to, two hours for eight hours off. You don't do an eight-hour day anyway. Rick, how much is he getting paid? He's, get, uh, he's getting money for this. He's, he's, I think his wage went up last time. So he's getting paid to be here, extracurricular, extra work, right? So it's moonlighting, and they're giving him a day off. Yeah. And he's contributing mm, nothing. Nothing. Huh? What, Carl? Would you say something, mate? Uh, huh? Going on. What? Going on with yourself. Well, say something back and earn your money. Well, let's, let's play a song. We've done a bit, done a bit of stuff there. You idiot. Don't say we, mate. I've not heard anything from you. We've heard your contribution. P.I.M.P. 50 Cent on XFM 104.9. Maybe because of A's. Uh, you, Stephen Merchant, and you, Carl Pilkington. All right. What are we doing then? How are we going, Carl? Are you feeling? Uh, what uh, on, on a scale of ten now? Happiness scale. About uh, just building back up again a bit. Yeah. Why? Well, on about five. Oh, that's not well, bad. What, what changed it? What changed it? Just calm down a bit. Yeah. Oh. The chill out vibes of PIMP probably helped you. Yeah. I think we should just say, um, give massive props. To uh, Adam and Joe, who stood in for oh, us. Oh yeah, stood in for us. Uh, Did great uh, job. Yeah, great, really good. In fact, interesting. Are, are they going to get their own show here? I think they should. Yeah, they'll probably get something. Well, there you go. Well, um, you it's interesting. As I was listening to them, they they had quite a nice selection of features. They had a couple of good competitions and things. Now, I don't know if um, having done them for XFM, is it somehow they may be kind of under some kind of XFM copyright, which would mean as we've got no ideas, maybe we could just hijack just some, of some of theirs. Maybe you could look no, into you're, that. Obviously uh, not Monday, you're not here, but... I was with Joe Cornish last night, went to oh, a yeah. little, um, do, uh, uh, um, Jonathan's house, and Joe was there. And he walked in, and I was taken aback by how tall he is. Sure. Because I've, I, I'd forgotten, and he's about 6'4", but he's unlikely to, you know what I mean by mm. that? It's sort yeah. of like some people surprise you. And, um, he was going, you know, it's, it's, I don't consider, um, 6'4", uh, big. I said, well, it is pretty big. I said, but I know what you mean, I walk around with Steve Merchant. Yeah. And, uh, he went, how tall Steve? And I was six, six, six foot seven. Yep. And Joe went, oh, that's, that's, a, that's nearly a disability, isn't it? Do you know, he's absolutely right, as far as <laughs> yeah, I'm concerned. No, yeah, do you know, yeah. I genuinely, since <laughs> school, I used to go to school with a little disabled fella. <laughs> lovely guy. No, I swear to God, lovely guy. And, yeah, I remember he came in when we got in the sixth form, and he, he basically got, I don't know what the ins and outs of it were, but as far as I could tell, he'd got a car for free. A specially converted it, car. Yeah. You know, because he was disabled. And yeah. so he was Same as Carl, around. same as Carl. Me, me, me. I need this, I need that. But it seemed to me that I was thinking, well, why can I not get something similar? Because there are some cars I can't fit in. Because I'm too tall. I genuinely cannot drive the smaller cars, the cheaper cars. I've got, I'm obliged to buy a more expensive, larger car. Because I can't fit in the time. Yeah, that's like saying you've got to pay more for your shoes because there's more leather, which is true. Which is absolutely true. It's no, a nightmare yeah, getting shoes. But fat people have to pay more for Do you know what? It's a nightmare getting chairs, comfy chairs that I can sit in at the home. I sit in a chair for very long and my back's killing me. Now, how is that not a disability? But no, I don't see, I don't, you don't see people like me whinging. But I think tall people, uh, I've read an article that taller people on average, uh, get, uh, higher wages through something, through, you know, an advantage or, or just because they're taken more seriously than little dumpy fellas. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think so there are, I, I genuinely don't think there are many benefits of being really tall. People seem to assume there are, but beyond the fact that I can reach things down from a high shelf. I know. I don't think there's any real perks. I've seen you hit your head a few times. That's I, a disability. I know, I have seen you hit your head a few times, and I think, oh God, that must have hurt. Obviously I'll make sure okay and then laugh. Of course. But I know it must be annoying. No, but I mean, there, there are, uh, there, there's a pub, there's one pub in Soho that he has to go down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he has to leave that, it looks like a limbo dancer. Yeah, or they've <laughs> almost got a lower me in on route. I always find it amusing. But, oh, it's, but like, for instance, on a plane, on an aeroplane, I can't 
get some of the seats. I can't fit in some of the seats. Not yeah, in any way. Not, not the way that I could. Well, you people, don't, how is that not a disability? There's some seats that people can't afford because they're poor. It's not that's a disability. What, that's irrelevant. Don't go on a plane then, because you're poor. But if you can't afford to go on a plane, you can't afford to go on a plane. You should have studied hard at school. But what annoys, yeah, but I mean, what annoys me about that is, is there's, there's, this a, there's is a physical disability yeah, I was I'm born with. Before, there's a, there's a weight allowance, so I might not be allowed loads of bags on, but there might be a big fat pig in the queue who's allowed the same chocolate but allowance as me. that's because they've been eating like a bloater. I couldn't stop myself from growing this tall. It wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't think, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I won't, I won't smoke when I'm a teenager. Maybe I'll screw up. <laughs> I'll eat healthy. I'll probably add an extra two feet. Uh, it well just you, kept going. You do eat too healthy. You eat too way too many greens. But that's not why I grew to this height. It's I a know, genetic well, thing, isn't it? Yeah, but if you live near, a, you know, a, some sort of pylon or something, and just as, as I say, smoke from an early age, you wouldn't have been that don't, tall. Don't think when I was a gangly teenager having the piss taken out of me, I wasn't thinking. I wish I'd been born near a pylon. <laughs> could you, you know, or Chernobyl? Could your mum or dad say, could have, could they have banded you like they did with little? Uh, didn't they do that with someone's feet? Well, yeah, concubines. Yeah, I didn't they, come out this with... tall, did I? No, but no, I like put in shot the How are they bandaged him? They'd have to bandage him round the feet and round the top of the head. Yeah, I'd be walking around <laughs> like a mummy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a bonsai boy. But I, people didn't really realise I was going to be this tall until I was 14 or 15. Yeah. You know, you don't realise when you're an eight-year-old. How tall, everyone's tall, how tall were you when you were about like a gangly, okay, so a typical gangly teenager, 15. How tall were you at 15? I don't know, six foot five, maybe? <laughs> And I bet you were like a bean pole, weren't you? Well, of course. Yeah. And what sort of glasses did you have? Cool. And then what did you have? I don't know, a monocle. <laughs> no, I can't remember. Did you wear a bow tie once? Did when I you... wore a bow tie? I thought, I thought, I was trying to preempt <laughs> the styles that might be coming around. I mean, I think I've been watching a lot of George Formby films. <laughs> And I thought it can only be a lot. It can only be a matter of time before the bow tie comes in. I thought it might be quite kind of urbane and debonair. Yeah. So what was that? Was for Robin Day at the height of his fame <laughs> I think he might around this time? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go for that dandy look. I thought <laughs> that's what the girls dandy, are good for. I know, yeah. The dandy. Oh dear. So I, I still want to see my... you with a pipe and trilby. Yeah. I just think you'd look great I walking on the boater. street. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowance for being tall. It doesn't count brutal. as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is. can you explain, for instance, uh, you know, travelling on a bus the, or a coach? There's some the seats only disadvantage is, uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. Was that a disability? Are that p people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah, it's the same okay. as the big fat people. It's, it's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get in the sort of Steve, sort of stare. Well, Steve obviously gets. I'm gonna, sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, Follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, like, with you, the goal. Oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you, it's more like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what frustrates me? <laughs> I I thought he did deserve having a Monday off. I've changed yeah. my tune. Yeah. yeah. I was try sometimes, I mean, you don't realise this, listeners, but sometimes I'm an intermediary. I do step in when he's winding him up, because yeah. Carl gets to the point where he's going to explode. Yeah, and it's crazy. okay, Joe, but leave And I step in, and yeah. this is the kind of response I get from Carl. This is the kind of back chat I get Well, I tell you, he's a little user. He's, I'll tell you what, because he's too scared of winding you up, because he knows that you'll just walk out of here and he won't get his Monday off. Absolutely. Play a record, you little oik. Weasel. She You're a weasel. <laughs> Joe Jackson, different for girls on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilberton. He's annoying me now because he's, he's he's got a day off, and he's got two hours, and he's miserable. He's not even doing anything for the show. It really annoys me. Well, hang on, wait a minute. What? You, you've forgotten his brilliant film quiz. Yeah, he's contributed that that he probably did during the week. Well, Do you know uh, what I mean, what are you going to change your attitude, Carl, or what? Or should we just like not bother with this show? Told you. What? Don't don't annoy me, and you'll get the best out of me. Yeah? I, can't, I told you, I, I told you, this show is to annoy you. You knew that. But this is what you're gonna get. Do you know what I mean? But no, you've got, you've got to be good and get the day off or there's no point. For I, I, any of us. Right, if you were having an operation, would you annoy the doctor? What? You the... can't concentrate, can he? <laughs> Don't mind him up. The he's a doctor. <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got to press a button and find out what a monkey did in <laughs> 1932. <laughs> and he's, oh. Where's the monkey news? It's, it's been a bit quiet, hasn't it? I've been what in the last three out. months? Okay, uh, there was something that I found last week about uh, one that was in an old people's home. 
um, <laughs> it, it escapes from some zoo, it was wandering about, it was enjoying itself, and then when it got to the night time, it was like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> and the first place it came across was like this old people's home. Yeah. Went in there, I think it was there for about a week and a half, <laughs> without anyone realising. No. No, no, no. No, no, it did. No, what, what, so, so the, the helpers and the nurses and the, the social workers and the, the matrons and all that, they thought, well, uh, Mr. Sanders looks a bit hairy. <laughs> but, I mean, that happens, you, you know, it comes out of your ear and your nose when you get to about 70. <laughs> and he stooped over, yeah, of course he has, he's got bow legs, yeah. And he eats more fruit, of course he does. Well, that, that's when they, that's when they realised. Why? Because someone in the kitchen said, hang on a minute, getting through more bananas than we know. <laughs> 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 uh, well, sure. do the competition, do the one thing you've done this week, probably in their time again, you're getting paid for it, you're having Mondays right, so off yeah, and you're not that, into it, so, that, that waste film, of time. That film sounds good, it's yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah come here. <laughs> Ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right. yeah. So that's a bit of a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, someone eating this woman. Yeah. And he's happy that yeah. he's had that. Yeah, go on, yeah. That was Gladiator. Yeah. So, who, who wins a this? A couple of people sent I, in, I, I sent in Hannibal, which would still work. Yeah. And, um, someone else sent in Maneater, which I suppose works. Well. Although he did put the thing in about, I'm well happy. Glad. Yeah, yeah I know. I know, it's not, so. it's, it's not worth the, uh, I don't know, under he gets for this and a day off, no. Well, right, Eva, right. who got the answer right, Eva, who got the answer right, well done to her, I'm gonna give her the prizes, she said that she'd heard this before on Christian O'Connell's show. Ah, uh, this is really annoying. Right, that's it. You're gonna do summer or we're gonna stop this and you have to work Mondays again, cos you are taking the piss out of me, you're taking the piss out of Graham, and you're taking the piss out of London. I'll see Darkness. I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve, Steve Merchant, Merchant you sure? That's little Carl Pilkington Carl over there. Where is he? There yeah, he is. There he is, yeah. Alright. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> back then, back together again. The old gang. Yeah, it started last week. Yeah, I think. Triumphant return. I think it went well last week, didn't it, Carl? Good show, wasn't it? You loved it, didn't you, Carl? Brilliant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, you weren't speaking to Suzanne last week at this time because <laughs> you said. She had a haircut, probably quite an expensive haircut. She's a lady in media. She's got to look good. She goes, she probably doesn't go to the barber like you or just shave it at home. Probably spent quite a little bit of money on it. She came home. She thought, well, my, my, my lover. sweetheart, my lover, my sweetheart, my, you know what I mean? The man well, in my, my life is gonna, is gonna love this. Well, he adores everything about me. He's gonna love my hair. She walked in. Hello, Carl. Alright. You look like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> is what you said to the poor woman. And then, talked about it on air, she was furious about that, did so what did you do? Carl? She uh, did listen, yeah. She wasn't happy. And she heard you slagging her hair off? Yeah. And she, well, what so this is probably then? annoying her now. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't matter, we can do a lot today, because she's at work. <laughs> so, and of course, no one's gonna tell her. Let's have a chat about a fat ass, shall we? <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. You are oh. in so much trouble. That's- <laughs> Look, he's realised he has. He is a little bit worried. Oh, didn't you? Didn't you go and buy her a coat or something? Took, her, a, took her out on Sunday and treated her to a new coat and that. Yeah. But I offered. I said as well. Coat. I said I'd pay. I said I'd pay to have it done again. Oh no, Carl! You have. Oh God! Oh my Christ! So she listened to the show. What did she say? You got home. She'd heard you slagging her hair off. I imagine. I mean, imagine that. I, he thinks that's a good thing. To, so like, we've won the pools. Brilliant. What are we doing? Well, you can have facial surgery now, love. <laughs> it's sort of like it's just uh, Christ. If you offered to have it done again, unbelievable. What? Yeah. But, but that, I, I, so, yeah, I, I got home and uh, she's like all being moody with me. Right. Yeah. You thought um, something's uh, wrong, so you must have listened to the show yeah. when I was slagging off her hair. <laughs> well, well you, his first thought was she probably looked at herself in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that barber's been round again. Yeah. 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 And, um, she just said, oh, that wasn't very nice of you, was it? Oh. So, I just said, hang on a minute. I said, that's, that's what we do on the show. When I'm slagging off, you know, Chinese people looking old or whatever, so you never interfere. <laughs> sure. <laughs> She's got to get her priorities. I love the fact that she's in the same queue <laughs> as a billion people you've never met. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's fantastic. She's in the same queue. Well, they, well, you didn't complain. Well, no, I was because Carl, I don't think Carl has ever admitted he might be in the wrong. 
ever. Certainly not to your eye. So did that you admit- That is so true. Isn't it? That is so true. He's never admitted that he might be in the wrong. So did you in this instance agree that maybe you'd overstep the mark? No, I just said she- she took it badly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's only a haircut. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, Steve, you, you haven't see seen it, so you can't- you can't start interfering on sure. this one. No, okay. No, I haven't seen it, but I- well, I, ver I very much doubt she looks like da Dave Hill from Slade, who, if I'm- uh, uh, unless I'm mistaken, used to cut his hair with garden shears blindfolded. <laughs> well. Um, so, you know what I mean? And did her teeth stick out and she started speaking with a Brummie accent as well? I've got used to it now anyway. So. And so did you, you bought- so <laughs> at one point- at some point you came crawling back and you said, do you want me- do you want me to buy you a coat? I just said, let's- let's leave that, let's go out and have a good weekend. Sure. <laughs> but get your hat before we go. So. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh treat, God! Treated it to a new coat and that. Oh. It's, sort of, it's a nice coat, so it takes people will look at that rather than there. Look, looking at the head. So if anyone, it, does it do flash? It's got obscenities across the back. If anyone who knows Carl's girlfriend is listening, Tell her. and um, maybe you're a work colleague and you're listening to the show, because I think this is terrible. Get her to phone him now. Get her to phone him now. I mean, get, get, get her to phone the, on the XFM number. What's, get, the, what's, number the, what's the what's the what's the fat ass <laughs> complaint line? Because you are in deep shite. Cemetery Gates by the Smiths, of course, off the Queen is Dead album. Lovely tune. Great Makes you happy, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's a nice song about dead people. Yeah, beautiful. I, um, just wondering what your opinions are, what your thoughts are on. on Britney Spears. Uh, liked a couple. Bit bored. She, oh. I think she's panicking a little bit. I think she's a little bit desperate with all this Madonna stuff. Yeah, all the kind of lesbian Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you know, um, yeah, she's alright. I've got nothing against the girl. Well, I read, I think it was in Hot Tickets magazine. Sure. Uh, it's free with the Evening Standard. Yeah. Um, oh, I might get some free Evening Standards now. I've plugged that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, was just reading in there that, I don't know if it's still gonna happen, but apparently she was gonna do a little cheeky appearance at G-A-Y. G-A-Y? In, uh, in London. And, uh, obviously I was quite excited, I'm a Spears fan. You know, sorry, do you know that's what that spells, don't you? G-A-Y? Yeah. Gay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is a gay club. Oh, sure, this is what This is what I was ascertaining from the article. Oh, because they've, yeah, so they've yeah, said, yeah, they've yeah, just yeah. said, they've called it what, sort of what it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it, apparently she was gonna, she was gonna be, uh, previewing some of her new album, live on stage, at GA1, and that's an intimate venue, normally you'd have to see someone like Spears, probably at Wembley Arena, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm a Spears fan, you know, get up a couple of the gang together. Yeah. <laughs> you know. For the lads. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Cruise yeah. down there. Yeah. Uh, but then I read on in the article that apparently, the doorman at GAY were only gonna let in, uh, regulars, and the way they were going to ascertain if you were a regular was by asking a series of questions at the door. What, testing if you're testing really- Now, I don't know if the questions would be about the interior of GAY. Or the interior of <laughs> someone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or just, just general kind of, like, you know. what, what, do you reckon you'd have passed the, uh, pretend- Well, that's what so I was wondering. So, I was wondering so you'd have had to pretend to be- GAY. GAY to get yeah. in to see Spears. Now Can that- you say gay on that, the radio? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, but now, I, I'm that's, that's irony, like, isn't it? So you're pretending to be gay to get into a club to mm. see a bird that yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a little quick test. <laughs> Shall I? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, uh, well, sorry, what's your name, mate? Um, Paolo. All right, Paolo. Yeah. Um, you, right, it, you haven't done a lot with your hair, you just sort of let it, sort of let it grow out. I mean, yeah. would you be putting product on a bit later? Because, I mean, you don't look very, I've been mean, sort of like, you don't, you look sort of quite, Quite masculine, quite. Yeah, masculine. well, sort of like, like you didn't care, like you have no care no, about no, no, how no. you look, like you're a. I no, mean, well, like, normally it would be shaved. Of course. Oh, okay. Yes. We would say normally that looks about like three months growth there. Why haven't you? I've been ill. <laughs> Nothing yeah. serious. Nothing serious. Okay. No, that's why I've let it grow. So it's grown. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what? What time would you normally be going out then? Paolo? Normally I'd go out about sort of. Uh, I'd go out about eightish. I. Eight o'clock in the evening no, you go? No, 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 no. Because no, that I'd sounds go. a bit early, that's what- No, no I'd go out about three in the morning normally. Right, so I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, right, so that's room. right, that's right, yeah. Where'd you go, down sort of- Thank Old Compton Street for a Compton coffee Street. and then yeah. on to <laughs> yeah. GAY like with that, your yeah. little shaved head. head. Yeah. Um, okay, well, well you, you, you're doing, you're doing fine. Sounding pretty good. Can I just ask you one final question? 20 I'm, bender points? Um, 20 bender points, so I'm just gonna let you in. Okay, I'm just sorry. gonna tell the guards to let you in. But, I'll just one more question. Yeah. Do you prefer 
Knobs or tits? Oh. Paolo. Uh, well, uh, knobs. Knobs, you love no, knobs, do you? Okay, Can't no, get no. enough knobs. So, you, what, you hate tits, I assume? Load them. Load you them. hate tits, do you? Yes. Okay. What? Even Liza Minnelli's? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I. Yeah, I love hers. But not in a, not in a, a straight not way. In a straight way in a so game. okay, okay. So you, you love you love knobs more than tits, right? Knobs. Okay, I okay. Love knobs. In you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, you know Britney's yeah. on, do you? Oh, she's so sexy. Oh, but see, that's what would give me away. Like I know. Great escape. It's just just the last. Yeah. You just. Well, you, you're. I, I mean, I think you're probably a bit bi. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. but I mean, go in anyway. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, the drinks are quite expensive. Oh, we've so. Pop your shirt off, will you? <laughs> Hey, uh, Outcast on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You alright, Carl? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Yeah? Just, um, when you were talking just now about, like, like the gay stuff. Yeah. Right, I don't know if you saw, uh, the thing the other week about the fella who's on that quiz show. Who? Sort of- Oh, right, okay. Gay Who? fella, straight, sort of man, man-woman. What are you know? talking about? What, tell me the, what, 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 what did you see? Tell me what you saw. It's such This is like a kid actually. come running in, and he's, <laughs> he's seeing something frightening, and it might, yeah. could be an alien, could be a ghost, could be a paedophile, <laughs> and you've got to get exactly what actually saw out of him. <laughs> right, what did you actually see? It's just this, this fella who's a, who's a woman. Right. Um, <laughs> right, okay, right, try and talk like a human being. Right. It's, it's a quiz show that's coming on the telly, and, um, it's this, this woman, uh, right, is it a fella who's a woman, or is it a woman? A bit of both, that's why I'm talking about it. But what do you mean? Is it a pre-op, is it a transsexual, a transvestite, is, is, is it a lady boy, is it an hermaphrodite, what is it? I'll tell you about it. Well, tell, tell me. You. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's a woman, N well, it's a man. <laughs> oh, for, oh, no, forget listen, it. Listen. Play a record. No, no, listen. Come on. What? It's, 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 it, it is a man. He is a man. Well. <laughs> It's a TV program where they've got this transvestite or a, television. It is a transvestite, yeah. So, but, it, but the problem is, uh, I'll tell you just because you don't know about it. The program is. I don't know. I still don't know about <laughs> it. I don't know anything about it. Still, I don't know. It's a woman, man, man, woman, man, man, woman, TV, TV program, look, t TV. No, it's a it's a man who is now sort of half a woman. <laughs> and <laughs> a man who is now half a woman. No, well, this is what's weird about it. <laughs> he's, he's got the top half. <laughs> but not the bottom half. What do you mean? Out. He's got breasts and a wig, but he's still got his his boys downstairs. He's Why got do you do that? His, his captain and the boys what are still there from? in his wife fronts. Why but that? upstairs, he's got a lovely pair of dumplings. Why do that? Well, he's halfway through. But why not get it all done in one one go? Maybe he couldn't afford it. Well, wait until you've got all the money. That just looks a mess. <laughs> And who's he pleasing there? <laughs> well, he wakes well, up in the morning and pleases himself. He can't believe his luck. He doesn't yeah. know where to start. <laughs> no, but what I don't understand, I mean, don't, you know, I don't want to see him. Well, can I just finish that going. sentence? What you don't understand is just about everything. Yeah. Right, what, no, what? I find it weird, right? I sort of get, I, I understand the, the gay thing, right? <laughs> but, do you? What do you mean? Well, you know, I, I know. Well, I tell know, me the gay thing. Explain well, the gay I thing. I just know if you, you're a fella, you like, you like men. I don't know much more than that. What do you mean you don't know? But what I mean is, with a transvestite, what's going on there? What what do they want? A transvestite is is, is a, a a cross dresser. See, I don't I don't get that either. <laughs> because you mean a transsexual? That's, somebody, that's a man who likes to dress in women's clothing. It's not necessarily they're not necessarily gay. They're not gay. They're often not gay. They just happen to like wearing women's Those clothes. Those clothes, right? Yeah. But, but then why not wear women's clothes that could be seen as a bloke's like Suzanne wears jeans. No, but they, yeah, Just but that's buy the thing. Jeans. But that's, that's, that's their problem, is it? They, they, they like being seen as a, as a, as a, as a woman. They like being seen as a woman. It's not just that it's more comfortable or they wear a kilt. They like being seen as a woman. They feel more comfortable. Alright, and what's the deal with this fella who's got- We don't both? know who this fella is. No. We don't know this man who's half a woman. He's called Miriam. 
Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I love this scientific basis. No, I'm so all he's done. He's he's had the tits done. He's probably had the hormones. Probably lived as a woman for a while. The last step that because you can probably reverse the breasts anyway because they're they're probably implants and hormonal things and whereas you you chop your knob and um boys off. That's you know. He come back the next day and go, sorry, I didn't mean that. I, I wanted my ears pierced. It's a bit more of a bigger operation to put them back. So doctors are probably making sure that he's just up to you've had the top half done, you're not going to go back on what you've said. But no, what's the top half being done? You, 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 I could have, I could get you breast implants, give you a bit of hormonal treatment. No, that and you would could be a great idea for next week. <laughs> and, and you could reverse it. What you can't do is grow a knob back. Well, you can. Last week we were talking about growing one on your arm. Yeah. We've done that. Because, uh, <laughs> but that is possible. <laughs> but the thing is, I, the truth of it is, I think I do know about this story. I think it was a television program called There's Something About Miriam. The oh. conceit of which was that this pre-op transsexual. So I guessed that right, yeah. Um, was masquerading as a woman. Right. And various blokes, un who didn't realise that this was a man, <gasps> had to, uh, oh, I've heard try and this. seduce him, her. And when they found out that it was actually a bloke, and they, a lot of them had kissed uh, him agree. her, they uh, they refused to let it be shown. I, I, agree, I agree, though. I, 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 that's just terrible. Yeah. That's oh, deceit. But, I mean, you know, that's awful. I, 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 yeah, I, I hated that. Yeah. 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 So, so what, um... I think it was a Sky One programme. Is there anything other than The Simpsons on Sky One that's worth watching? <laughs> Have you ever tried to watch that? Have you ever seen Kirsty's Home Videos? Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's things like it's dogs, dogs, dogs on a slide, babies falling over. Do you know, it's uh, only recently reduced from an hour in length. Really? It's been an hour long and it was just, if you haven't seen it, it's just like camcorder footage like you know what I like? of people falling I, over. I like an old woman at a wedding falling over and showing her blues. <laughs> that's that's my favourite. I like it when it's Kirsty's uh, Home Videos uncut. So it's kind of four old women, like, naked. With their tits falling out. Windsurfing. Oh, Christ, it, it, imagine it, that. Does it whistle? Well, it's just a, it's just, I mean, <laughs> have you ever really sat and watched anything on, on Sky One? No. That wasn't The Simpsons, Simpsons or, Star, I think or, or Star Trek? I think that's what I watch on, I, I think that's or pretty wrestling. much what I watch. Wrestling? They have WWF wrestling, cartoons, and just the worst programs. I mean, it's I've a seen a bit of the wrestling, it's... It's hilarious. It it's is like hilarious. A, it's like a station that's made by a fourteen-year-old boy. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's probably what it is, isn't it? Yeah. That, I mean, that's exactly the demographic. Do you like Sky One, Carl? I haven't got I haven't got satellite ever. So why can't why not? I thought you'd have loved that. No, I would love it. I oh, Discovery really Channel's all know, about know, know, know. slugs and that and weird stuff like that. I know. Chimps. I was about a, slugs the other day. There's a thing uh, on one of the channels called Monkey Business. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. Because I was doing that thing, wasn't I, with Richard Bacon? Yeah. Where you watch the telly and that. You're and talking you... riddles. Mm. You actually talk in riddles and yeah. forget a play record. You should be the gatekeeper <laughs> in some kind of Dungeons and Dragons. Hello, quiz game. Uh, uh, all right, yeah. Let me enter. All right, yeah, but I was doing that thing with Richard Bacon. What can he mean? <laughs> what what can he mean? He is the wise There's one. There's a man who's a small woman. Yeah, yeah. The upper is half it? is, but is the bottom. Yeah, play record. Bit of clash. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Come on. Train in vain. Extra fame. Wonderful. Oh, no. Johnny Cash, Hurt, on XFM, 104.9. That's brilliant, isn't it? Good. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So, what have we done? We've done gays, transvestites, have we done knob use yet, or...? It's nice that you can talk about pre-op transsexuals nowadays on the radio. I know. You know without the fear of complaints or... I know. Listeners. <laughs> listeners, that's the thing. <laughs> if we had any listeners, we'd get complaints, we really wouldn't would. we? We really would. We'd get some serious complaints if yeah. anyone cared enough. That's to why pick we haven't gone to, to a, a decent station with, you know. A big we would audience. never do on a, on a real radio station. We could never do this. No. Could we? Why we not? Don't. Why not? See, I, I'm not doing this to like mess about and offend anyone. I think it's an interesting topic. What you talking gobbledygook? Not really knowing what. Yeah, Carl, Carl, what woman, Carl, for the first five minutes, you couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, um, although, although, with, you know, the, the, you know, who's the biggest, most professional person in radio? It's probably Terry Wogan, isn't mm. it? And it was it you that said you can't tell what the sentence he's saying because no. he keeps coming up at the end before. But he never. After. There's well, never any well, punctuation. Well, yeah. So yeah. he'll just segue <laughs> from one point to the next. So he'll be like, going on the holidays, Friday. We're having a lovely time, says <laughs> Mrs. Dorothy <laughs> Sheehan of Westminster. 
I'm thinking of going to Greece. <laughs> oh, and it's so, <laughs> so he's got his knobs, but he's still got the tits. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. Typical. <laughs> Typical. Oh, hello, Paolo. Do you Hello want to come there. into my club yeah, to see? Yeah, I'd love to go. Britney Spears, Britney Spears. Fan. Yeah, well, it doesn't start for a while. It's, sure. uh, it's only about eight o'clock and, you know, you're not going out for hours yet. No, I am not no, eight no, or seven. No, no. But, um, might as well watch a bit of telly. We've got, uh, FA Cup final. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just there's a good one, isn't it? Or we've got, um, the Eurovision Song Contest. What do you want to watch, Paolo? Ooh, blimey, blimey. Well, I love all the, um, the camp and lame. Right. Of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. Well, I, oh. Is that David Beckham playing? Because I love him. Oh, his I see hair what you've done. Legs. See what you've done. You see? So you will watch the football, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you'll be mainly looking at the. Just looking at the, the, the legs and the, yeah. the tonic joints. So while Beckham's knocking him in, yeah. you'll be. <laughs> exactly, knocking <laughs> one. Um... Right. Let's, uh. Do you know, I remember, I don't. I mean, I never really looked, but when you see old clips of, say, early 80s footballers, the shorts are much tighter, aren't they? I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. I don't I know. Really Do you, looking. I remember oh. Carl saying when he went and there was two strippers, a bloke <laughs> and a woman, and they whipped off their clothes at the same time, and you looked straight at the boys. Yeah, everybody pack. would. You would have done. Right. You do do. You do do. You look at his do do. <laughs> what do you mean? You look at his do do. No, what? I'm just saying, you, if you were there, you would have done the same. Two people on the stage. Yeah. Woman and a man. Yeah. They were getting the clothes off. Yeah. Right. The fella. Took his pants off the same time as a girl took her knickers off. Yeah, right. right. All I'm saying is it's human nature. So have a, have a quick look, have a quick glance, see what's going on. <laughs> see what's going on! And then I wanted, I wanted to look at the woman, but she put her knickers back on quick. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't live opposite from you, does she? But just, sorry, just to return briefly to the shorts question. I, yeah. It's only because in the 30s and 40s, they were huge shorts, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, genuinely massive, like yeah, uh, huge. A small child could well, wear them as trousers. They were. I think that's to do with comfort and decency, though, isn't it? And then, but by the sort of eighties, there was barely any shorts there. I think that was fashion. But it's weird that it's. Uh, you feel like at some point someone's gone, guys. I mean, good game too today, small. But <laughs> this is ludicrous. But that's but that's what happened, isn't it? Because you know, it's things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And fashion, it's like like flares, yeah. drain pipes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. heels flat. Yeah. Tall hats, flat <laughs> hats. <laughs> yeah. What do you make of the miniskirt? Uh, long hair, skinhead. <laughs> yeah. Miniskirt, uh, again, I don't know, they, I'm, I'm sure there's been ten resurgences of miniskirts yeah. since 65, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fashion, so the short, uh, you know what, do you know what I think, Steve? I think the shorts will get smaller again before we die. <laughs> I think we'll see one more tight little packet of Premiership footballers running round with their awful, squeezed, yeah. like, uh, like uh, the last chicken in a butcher's window. <laughs> Almost protruding. Wrapped up, yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine if they just wore cling film shorts so you could see what was happening there, Carl. Where would you look then? Because you like football, don't you? We're doing Rockbusters. <laughs> oh, oh, I so. Go on then. Oh. Right, uh, we brought it back. Uh, this is where I give a cryptic clue. Well. And some initials. Yeah. And you work it out and you win some stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna tell you what the prizes are, needless to say, they're mediocre prizes for a mediocre quiz. Sure, okay, yeah, oh, where's right, DVDs and VHS, and VHS, yes. Yeah, 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 VHS, who's still got that? Right, so there's three, three of them, and what you can do now, we've tweaked it a bit. Okay. You can text in. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can email or text. We've tweaked it a bit. Mm. Right. 83XFM is the text, or it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Is that what it is? 83XFM? That's it. That is good, though, and it's convenient, because who's got their laptop up and running and exactly. texting? On the so loop. it's just your phone. Brilliant. All right. Mine so, can do that. I don't know how to do that on my phone. I don't know how to get... What do you my, mean? Huh? What do you mean? My brother wanted my postcode. He said, text it to me. Mm. I couldn't work out how to do WC and That's 1. you're an old man. It's so I had, to, I had to write out W C 1. Oh, for goodness sake. I didn't know how to do it. I can't, it, it, just, it won't do it for me. Pathetic. It's ridiculous. Go well, on. Well, it's 83936, if, if you have that problem. Right? Right, come on, get on with the quiz. I right. don't know. Three, There's too many numbers, mate. Three, uh, three clues. Here we go. First one is, uh, this Teletubby has got lice. <laughs> right? This Teletubby has got lice. This Teletubby has got lice. Right. The initial A is P, so it's a band or an artist yep. that starts with P, and the clue is, this Teletubby has got lice, right? Yep. Um, second one. <sighs> I've, I've really, already not holding out much hope I for this. <laughs> Working out, go on. Uh, right, second one. 
I've just messed that first one up. Thing, right? <laughs> oh, for <laughs> Christ! But what, when what? I give it out later, it'll be. We'll, I'll sneak it in without. Right? Just don't repeat anything I say. You're an idiot. Listen, you really are no, an idiot. No, 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 play, play a record. No, play a record. record. Play someone. a record. You're a fool. Play no, a record. Let me, let me just no, 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 press the no. Press you've the ruined button. it. It's really, you're an idiot. Please stop. <laughs> Ludicrous. Red Vines by Amy Mann. Brilliant, that isn't it? Very good. On XFM 104.9. Well, um, Carl mucked up Rockbusters as usual. I mean, it's, uh, you know what? I like it when he mucks up early because it doesn't waste people's lives sure. for 40 minutes realizing he's mucked up at the end. Yeah. So, obviously, people are already. They, they know what it is. They know what it is already. They've said, well, it's police, isn't it? You meant to say nits instead of lice. Yeah. You're an idiot. So that one's gone. So what, what have you got next? Right, so that's just an idea. If you haven't heard it before, that's that's how my head works. Right, this Teletubby has got nit. So Poe. P, so Poe is a Teletubby. Yeah. Uh, so so when he says cryptic, it's not only what the what the answer is, it's what the question was meant to be. Sure. So. Alright, so there's only two, so you've got even a better chance of winning than that. Well. So, the second one is, I'm saving that money to buy condoms. Alright. Think about it. Easy. Too easy. J right. JC. Yeah, right, well that's, that's too- that, uh, so everyone's got that one. I feel like saying it now. Yeah, but so don't- that's, don't Well that's say rubbish. It now. Yeah, but you've got to have an easy one in there, otherwise people get bored, don't First they? one was easy, we gave them the answer. Yeah, but- hang on. <laughs> that's the easiest one we've ever had. Police. And the- and the- <laughs> and the second one is- Yeah. Uh, when you're making bread, add a little bit of colour for a change. Alright? When you're making bread, add a little bit of colour, just change things a little bit. What are the initials? Right? D. Just D. Just D. Right? right? So, what you've got there, I'm saving that money to buy condoms, the initials mm -hmm. JC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy, yeah. Nice. And, uh, and when you're making some bread, just chuck some, chuck some colour in there. Sure. You know what I mean? Change, yeah. change yeah, it yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, like the clue. The clue changes every time. <laughs> yeah. The clue changes every time. Unlike <laughs> the Times crossword, the clue changes every time it's said. 83XFM is one of Texas, or it's Ricky Dr. Bay's. At xfm.co.uk. Rubbish. That, right? Pointless. <laughs> David Bowie and Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Yeah. Love that one. Love the original. On yeah. XFM 104.9. Good work to David Bowie and the Kinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time. Big time. Um, reading the paper there, Yeah, Steve? well, I don't normally read the paper, but, no. um, I was having a glance through the Daily Express. Does anyone read the Express? Well, you do at the moment, look. Well, <laughs> true. Live on air. Yeah. Read but it out and then uh, about 400 people will know what's in it. <laughs> I just read, I was obviously attracted, uh, by this little news item, gun cool. raid by three Saddams. Uh, three armed men- Oh, they're up to their old tricks again, yeah, are they? Yeah. yeah. Three armed men wearing Saddam Hussein masks were on the run last night after robbing a corner shop. The raiders threatened the worker with a handgun and knife, ordering him to open the till, blah, 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 get money out. And it says that they also tried to rob an earlier shop earlier in the day. Police said, we are linking the raids because the descriptions of the offenders are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, what did the first one not quite get yeah, right? Yeah. Well, they looked very similar. <laughs> I right. think it was Gaddafi. Three Gaddafis. Right. Because that's weird, because we've had three yes, Saddam Hussein's down a Oh, so that, that's what I meant. Is Saddam it the same guys? Cause I don't well, wanna, I assume so. I wouldn't have thought I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, no, 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 get no, the Gaddafi guys same. on the Saddam Hussein No, I, no, I, I'm, I'm almost sure <laughs> it, it'd be the same way. I didn't know, I, one's got a moustache, haven't they? One like a devil, or they all got a moustache. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's, there were three blokes with masks. Middle Eastern appearance. I don't know. But I mean, I imagine it's the same. I am, um, because I've only ever seen really, um, robberies being planned in films. Sure. So I don't know how it works. I assume that. So you say. <laughs> yeah. But I assume at some point someone's got to get together. One of them, the ringleaders, got to get together and go. Okay, well, we need to wear masks. Obviously, just guys our patients. Yeah. I'm thinking of going with the regular stockings. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll tell you, it'll be funny. <laughs> well, I don't want to be funny. Well, no, no. We want to, we we know. want to strike fear into the hearts. Of yeah, the but I mean, kill two birds with one stone. We get the robbery and we have a laugh with it. fear. Do you say you want to strike fear? Well, wear a mask of someone who's really scary. Who's the scariest bloke in the world? Well, I, I don't know. So that makes sense. 
I've got three of them. <laughs> well, what, why? I've, got, I've got three of them. Let's all wear Saddam Hussein. It'd be a laugh. Well, it's not, I don't want it to be a laugh. I'd no, love but it don't hurt if we're having a laugh and that's what I want. I want to make money and have a laugh. <laughs> why? I love, that's well, well, I'm yeah. only in the money. I'm only in it for the money. Well, the yeah, laugh's I mean, not important to well, me. Well, no, it's a fear. I want to strike fear. We could also make a political point. I don't want to make a political point. No, you just want the money. I'm a thug. I'm not. I'm not. We could have a laugh and we could make a political point. Why not? What political point? Whether it's with, you know, maybe we're sort of stealing from the rich and not like Robin Hood. Well, never mind Robin Hood, let's rob Barclays. That's the <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to do my stuff. I'm going to do my stuff. <laughs> you're, so, you're a comedian, you don't, I'm not well, sure you let's should let's be in Well, let's just wear the masks. Let's wear the masks. <laughs> How did it happen? Did they go and buy them? It's separately, look, look, spread yeah. out. Look, you go to the joke shop in Covent Garden, yeah. I'll go to the one in Southampton Row. Yeah. Brilliant. See, I, cause it's so often the case that they're using masks, it used to be Reagan, Thatcher, they were always a, if I was the guy selling those, like, when three guys came in, three shifty looking blokes, to yeah. buy three identical masks. Yeah, in stockings. <laughs> in stockings. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know who we are. Sorry, yeah. can I just check, you're not gonna rob. Definitely not. With these masks. But just think of the police looking at those robbers. Uh, every time they go past one of those awful, Sort of gift shop. They think <laughs> that, oh no, it's just, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just in the window there with, uh, <laughs> yeah. with Michael Jackson and, uh, Shirley Bassett. Yeah, George Bush. Oh, Paolo, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. I know you love knobs and that, and you hate tits. Yeah. What about Shirley Bass's tits? Uh, well, I mean, I'm a fan of them, because I'm a fan of Shirley, but I don't like you know, them. Cool, you're, yeah, you're, you're pretty bent. You are pretty bent. <laughs> pretty Come good. in. Thanks for Br Britain is on in seven hours. Excellent. Yeah, what are you doing yeah. out at this time? No, 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 I just came out to, uh, get some, uh, no. milk. <laughs> yeah, get some, uh, knob action. Cock in the toilet. <laughs> Carl. Um, plenty of answers, yeah. Carl, so far for your, um, I yeah. say quiz, I'm not sure that's really valid. Yeah, loads coming in. We're giving away some more stuff later as well, and that yeah. film thing, that's coming up. Coming up. That's when you that. put yourself into a, a, a famous film, yeah. and you act out. Is that, is that it? You've yeah. done, you've done The Graduate, haven't you? Done The Graduate, done Silence of the Lambs, yeah. done, uh, Billy Elliot. Um, <laughs> I liked it, but you, um, what was your one, uh, a sixth sense. <laughs> I see sense. weird stuff. Yeah, the sixth sense was good. <laughs> so well, that's coming up later. We're doing that later. That's well, look, well, we'll look forward to that. Look forward to we're that. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah. I'm assuming we've got some great music. Uh, still like that. Thorns. Yeah. Thorns. Oh, I'm obsessed with this now. This is uh, the Thorns, and uh, I can't remember on XFM 104.9. Brilliant. <laughs> Strokes, 12.51 on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? Done loads of stuff. Go slag, on, what? slag Suzanne off. Yeah, brilliant. First link. Yeah. Talks about trannies. <laughs> yeah. Right. Same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the, on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Your Bible. Mm -hmm. Where you get all your information about the world and the universe and morality from. And you know, like, how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read, read the headline. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Anna Nova, a sort of nick that idea, to grab you. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat, straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right, these are stories. But the headlines already existed, that was why you thought nah, that was a good not idea. not like this though. Alright. <laughs> Headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. You know, you vibrating need... shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could you read on anyway? <laughs> can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Read on me. anyway. Well, Read... you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so, right. Okay, so what this there, is frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've turned it off. If yeah. you ought to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in, in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. <laughs> right. Bong. Right. Right. Look it up. Look it up, look it up on the internet. Right. Hand and over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> Oh, ah, brilliant. oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I love that. Temple Donald, this one isn't very good. And oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, that's, that's the one I did read on about. 
<laughs> well, I love that. that all those. That's the one he went on about. Go on then. Just um. Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No. <laughs> <laughs>